Section 9.5 is about classes of functions. We've done enough work with the different kinds of functions that we're going to list nine different functions in this video and give you some characteristics to look for when dealing with those functions. Then we're going to do some examples on how you can find out what a function is based on the graph or based on the equation. We're going to start with a constant function. A constant function is of the equation y equals a. a is just some number, some constant. And a constant function is always a horizontal line. It's going to cross the y-axis. The next one is a direct variation function. The equation is y equals ax. When we first learned about this, we actually said y equals kx. We called this a value a constant of variation. A direct variation always goes through the origin, and it's never vertical or horizontal. If it was horizontal, then it would be a constant function. The next one is the identity function. The equation is y equals x. Now this is nothing more than a special direct variation, except the a value is a 1. And the interesting thing about this one is all of the points are a, a. So you have a point that's 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 3, negative 3. All of the points on the identity function have the same value for the x and y. Our next function is the greatest integer function. It has an expression that's inside of the greatest integer symbol. And if it, if it fits that, it's a greatest integer function. And the shape of it looks like steps. It's also known as a step function. The next one is the absolute value function. And that's created when you have a direct variation that's inside the absolute value bars. If you have that, the shape of that function is going to be a V-shape, and then you can adjust that V-shape going up and down by adding and subtracting numbers to it. The next one's a quadratic function. It looks like this, so y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's a general form, and the shape of a quadratic is a parabola. The next one is the square root function. It comes when you have an expression that's inside of a square root symbol, and the curve goes off in one direction. Notice it doesn't go down into the negative values because you can't have negatives underneath the radical sign. The next function is the rational function. The general form looks like this, y equals uh, p of x over q of x, where those are just two polynomial functions. And the graph is going to have one or more asymptotes and or holes. And then the last function is the inverse variation function. The general form is y equals a over x, where a is a special constant. Uh, and this really is just a special rational function, where the, the polynomial function on the top is just a constant, in this case an a. And it's always going to have two asymptotes, one at the x equals 0 and one at y equals 0. Here we're going to be given a picture, and we have to identify the type of function simply by looking at the graph. Well, if you notice, this graph has a starting point that curves off in one direction, and the kind of function that does that is the square root function. This one goes through the origin, and it looks like a straight line, so you might think that it's a direct variation. Uh, and you wouldn't be wrong, that wouldn't be a bad guess, but if you notice, this one has a hole right here. And the only kind of functions that have holes are rational functions. Here's a kind of a question that you might get on an ACT. It talks about this girl named Emily launching a rocket. Gives you some information about the height and the time and it gives you this function which is the important part here. This is the function we're talking about. And we gotta figure out which graph um, deals with that function. Now, if you didn't know about functions, this question might be harder than what it is. If you look at the function, however, it has a squared on it. And the only kind of function that we know of that has a squared on it is a quadratic. And if you know that this is a quadratic, there's really only one of these that is the graph of a quadratic, and that's B. Quadratic functions create parabolas. Here we have to identify the kind of function that you see here and then graph it. Well, this function has an absolute value um, around direct variation, so we know that this is the absolute value function, which means that the graph is going to look like a V. Now, if I know that this is going to be a V, that can help me as I try to graph some of the points on here. 
So I'll make a small table of x and y values. For example, if I put a 0 in for my x, absolute value of 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Now I know it's going to be a v, so I'm going to find a point to the left and to the right. Uh, I'm going to try negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So negative 2, 1 is a point. And then if I do positive 2 also, I should get a 1 right there. So that helps me create my absolute value graph, which looks like that. For this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, the equation is y equals some number, um, a or k. The point is there's some number here. And that is a direct variation. Now, if you don't know about a direct variation, you might not know where to start. But we know that direct variations all go through the center. So we know we're going to start there. And then my constant, negative 2 over 3, can act like a slope. So a rise of 2 down, down 2 to the right 3. Either that or I could plug in a value and, and find other points, but I'm just going to use my slope. I could do a rise of 2 and a run of negative 3. That's the other way you could do it. So this is the direct variation and it looks like that.